never leaving us or forsaking us. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody say praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his word and has given us Jesus, our Messiah, and commanded us to be light to the world. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you all for being here this morning in spite of the weather. Fortunately, the uh, local news channels didn't put out any cancellations, so we all thought the roads were pretty good. Praise the Lord. And by the time we found out they weren't, it was too late. We were already on the way. Hallelujah. Amen. God knows how to do it. Praise the Lord. Anyway, God is good, and uh, so the, the storm has passed. And Amen. We've got good things coming ahead. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Welcome, all of you, for being here. Thank you for sharing your testimonies, your prayer requests. Thank you, all of you that are with us uh, on the Internet, or Facebook, however you're joining us this morning. We appreciate that and uh, know that uh, God is seeing us all as one, regardless of our geographic locations. Amen. Amen. So bless the Lord and praise Amen. God. Thank you for all of you for being with us and may God bless us all with his presence. Amen. In a tangible way. We know that he's always with us. Amen, but it's great when he shows up in a way that is a little bit different than yeah. what we're used to. Praise God. Right. Yes, Mike. You've got a large crowd today. You've got over 10. So Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Here, here. Standing room only. Hallelujah. We'll have to get the uh, extra rooms opened up for him. Praise the Lord. And tomorrow, tomorrow is a, is a special day. Tomorrow's Sally's birthday. Woo! Yeah. And Sally's going to be... A day older than she is today, praise the Lord. That's how I handled that pretty well, right? Because I'm going home with her, hallelujah. The good news is, though, for at least a month, she's an older woman, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God, I get to be that young guy again, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For a month, and I'll just enjoy every single day of that, praise God. Amen. But happy birthday yeah. to my spouse, yeah. praise the Lord, yeah. and many, many more, amen. Yeah. Praise God. God is good, and uh, he's blessing us in so many ways, and uh, this is going to be a great year. Yeah. It's going to be a challenging year, but it's going to be a great year. Yes. Uh, nothing, you know, my dad used to say, it's amazing how he gets smarter uh, the older I get, but uh, in some ways at least, uh, but uh, there's no free lunch. Nothing's free. And uh, when somebody's offering you something that sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, there's always a cost. If it's worth anything, there's going to be a price to be paid uh, somehow, some way. If it has any value to you, you're going you're gonna to earn it to some degree, if you understand what I'm saying. And I think that's what God expects of all of us. Amen. To be willing to, uh, to, to receive his blessings, but be willing to work the work of God in order to receive it. It isn't that God doesn't have grace for us because we all know he's given us so much that we never did anything to get. In fact, we did everything we could to, to stop it from coming and yet God blessed us with it anyway. But as we know the Lord and the more we know the Lord, the more it should be our intention to try to do things to cooperate with him and with his word and to bring things to pass. Praise the Lord. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that. I won't go into a lot of details because we all live in this world and we know how screwed up it is. Uh, beyond anything I could have ever imagined. Uh, I, and I mean that. I mean, I think back when I was a kid growing up, uh, my parents would be f totally, they would be in an, a sanitarium or something by now. If they were, you know, in their 40s or 50s and, and seeing that what's going on around us today. So, uh, and that's the way it is to me as a child growing up in the 40s and 50s and 60s, uh, late 40s, praise the Lord. Um, the uh, things are just, I mean, it's like a different world. It really is. And it's demonic. 
Uh, we can call it politics. We can call it whatever we want. But the truth is, it's demonic. It is. And everything from sexual identity and transgendering and, and uh, you know, no laws are to be enforced anymore unless they're against Christians, right. <laughs> basically. Right. Amen. It's just insane. It's just nuts. But uh, with all of that being said, God has a plan. Yes. And we were birthed for this yes. moment. Yes. Our time is not random. Yes. He knew us before the foundation of the world. In Christ, he knew us. And he determined then when our days would be. Yep. Amen. So we are a chosen generation, literally, uh, to accomplish some great things in the kingdom of God and for the kingdom of God by His grace and His yes. anointing and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. And so let's, let's look at a few scriptures here to get us started. And then we'll go from there. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Isaiah 5 verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And now Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through 3. Mm. Praise the Lord. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon yes. thee. Yes. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. Or the unbelievers yes. will come to your light. Yes. And kings to the brightness yes. of his rising. Yes. Praise the Lord. Cool. Glory to God. That's where we're at. That's where we're living. Yes. Praise the Lord. That word Gentile just simply means unbelievers. Praise God. Yes. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. Ephesians 3 verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. That word principalities and powers also translates as worlds. Plural. So to the intent that now unto the worlds, you could say, and powers that rule them in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, that we might reveal this. Amen. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Ephesians 6 and 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against worlds, against the powers of those worlds, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, mm -hmm. against spiritual wickedness mm -hmm. in high places. Well, we don't have to imagine that anymore. Praise the Lord. That's the reality that we live in. Amen. Right. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And then let's... Genesis 1, verses 1 through 3, and then we'll get into this. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. Actually, he said, Light be, and light was. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So when it all began, heaven came here on earth. This physical, earthly world, more than any of the higher spiritual worlds that he's talking about here in principalities and powers and so forth, was the place where the very essence of God's infinite light was going to be found. Mm -hmm. But humankind, humanity, step by step, banished that divine presence from its home, beginning with a tree of knowledge, with a man who murdered his brother, mm -hmm. 
with all of those things that human beings do and still do to this day. Since humankind chased it away, only humankind can bring it back. Now we know what Jesus did, but we are Christ in this world. This bringing back what humans chased away began with Abram. Abraham, amen, who proclaimed oneness for all the world. That's where he came from, a, uh, a, an idolatrous country, nation, childhood, upbringing, to a place of one God, the one true God. Mm-hmm. That's where it all began. That's where it began, the retaking of this world. And it ends with us. Mm-hmm. Began with Abram, was fulfilled in Jesus, but ends with us. Our generation, and I'm saying this without any hesitation. You can say it's prophetic, but it's, it's just the truth. Our generation is going to bring heaven back down to earth. It's the Word of God. It's the truth, and I think every one of us feel it and are sensing it more and more with each passing day. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Ephesians 3. 9 and 10. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. We're the ones that are going to reveal this. We're the ones that are going to bring this. Amen. To pass. So in Song of Songs, or Song of Solomon, however you want to call it, let's look at uh, chapter 4, beginning at verse 12 through chapter 5, verse 1. So Song of Songs 4, verse 12 through 5, verse 1. Pardon? There, it's, uh, I think, 16 or 17. I can't remember off the top of my head. Now, look at the, the wording of this. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Maybe a well, I suppose. Praise the Lord. Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates with pleasant fruits, camphor and spikenard. Spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon. With all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all the chief spices, a fountain of gardens a well of living waters and streams from Lebanon. Awake, O north wind, and come, thou south. Blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruits. Before I read verse 1, you know, remember the scripture that says, we are uh, an aroma of God to those that are saved. And something... Bad for those who are not. Amen. I am come to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O friends. Drink. Yea, drink abundantly. O beloved. Praise the Lord. There's a, there's a teaching of uh, that there are four worlds. One is emanation or light. One is creation that we see in Genesis chapter 1. One is formation, that's man. And one is action, which is dominion that God gave to man to act, to act on his word, to act on his revelation and his truth. Amen? Emanation is... If you think about it, 
It's a world that's all about hidden potentials that are, that are coming out into the open. Light, right? It's everything that could be, there has to be something first. That first thing is light. That's the, that's the emanation. It's called, in the, in the Hebrew, it's called etzlo. And it's, what it means is right up next to God. That word light, etzlo, it's, it means right in God's face or right in God's, almost in God's physical being. And creation is the, if you think about it, is the first instance of something from nothing. That's how we look at it. That's how man looks at it, at least. It's the point where the focus is no longer on the light, but on the creation. Now that sounds good, but here's what man does to it. I mean, think about it. Why, why do we say it's something from nothing? God's not nothing. Right? I mean, we say it came from nothing. No, it, it, it came from God. It, it, it doesn't come from nowhere. It doesn't come from nothing. But to the world, and this is the point that God makes in the story of creation, basically, to the world of creation, everything that came before is nothingness. E even if you understand intellectually that every moment we're being created again, and again and again, over and over and over throughout our entire life. And if you don't believe me, think about how God made us. Your skin is replenished every year. Your organs are renewed. Everything about us is renewed. Now, because of the fall, there is a fall off from that. Otherwise, we'd be eternal beings. But intentionally, the way we were built was to be a continuous creation. Recreated every day, recreated. And that's how we are to live our lives. That's how God intended us to live, even in the fallen world. Because we're not of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of the world. That's why the, 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 the young men, uh, you know, grow weary, right? Because they're not conscious of this. I think the older you get, the more you become kind of thinking about things in a different light, right? But we, they that wait, upon the Lord will renew their strength. There's, there's recreation going on in us all the time if we will wait on the Lord, on His Word, on His promise, on His truth. Amen? So every moment of our being, we're created again. But that's not the world's reality. Amen? Because from the world's perspective, you can't even imagine a world in which you don't exist. Or maybe I'm just egotistical maniac, but I'm just saying it's hard to imagine a world that I'm not part of it. So you feel like you've been around forever and that you will be around forever. I don't think that's really egotistical. I think it's a God sense. It's a sense of God putting it in us that we are eternal creatures. We are eternal beings. We have always been. We were in Christ before the foundation of the world, and we will always be. Yes. We are eternal beings. We are spirit beings. Yes, Lord. Amen? And because we're going to be around forever or feel that way or think that way, that's why everything in the world of creation to a human, a non-Christian, to a non-believer, that's why everything in the world of creation feels itself is something other than God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how hidden the light is once creation comes. I mean, even from our perspective, I've thought about this, and I'm praying for a revelation, I'm praying for a miracle, I'm praying for something, and I get a light, or the light comes, or the revelation comes, or the miracle comes. Once that happens and the thing is created, or the thing comes to pass, it isn't long before we forget about the miracle. Right. Because the next time we fall into a ditch, right. we're whining and complaining and wondering, how, is this, how does this happen, and why did it happen? Because we've forgotten about the light. Right. We've only focused on the creation. That's where the entire world is. Right. It's just about this. Yep. It's, it's not about how it came to be. It's about, in fact, they try to deny how it came to be so that they can continue to perpetuate the ignorance of what it is they're living in right. and how they're living in and why it's okay to say good is evil 
and evil is good. Light is darkness and darkness is light. Amen. It's saying something other than God is what we are. Because that's how hidden the light is. But God is saying continuously. We, be, we are continuously being recreated. So what is he saying? He's saying continuously let there be light. Yes. Let you be light. The ultimate form of light is God's glory arises. Shekinah, it's called. God coming to his garden. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. By the way, you are the garden. Yeah. The garden isn't a place, it's a somebody. Yes. A light to creation. That's why we're here. Yes. To be light. That's our purpose. Yes. But I understand once the light has come and you've been created and you're here, it's easy to just get caught up in the creation. That's what happens to us as Christians. We think our whole life is about earning a living, making things better for our family. I'm not saying those things aren't true. It's just they become the whole focus. When that's not our focus, we are light. We forget that we're light and get totally absorbed in the creation. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. I'm not saying these things to be depressing. I'm saying these things because we need a mind shift. We need a, a transfer in the way that we yes. think. Yes. It, it can no longer be happy creation. Let's just move on with this and make it a better place and have more of the things that creation has to offer for us. We're past that. That's what a lot of what it is we're seeing coming from this government yep. and from the individuals that are supposedly running it. Yep. You can see that's, that, that is their whole existence. Yep. They can't see beyond it. And it's why we look at it and go, how ignorant can you be? How, what is wrong? Yeah. It's dark, man. That's what's wrong. It's just pitch black out there. There's nothing but creation. There's no light. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a, set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, your God works, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Think, look, let, let me just take a left-hand turn here. But the dividing of the Red Sea was a miraculous supernatural event. Everybody that knows anything about it recognizes that. Amen? So let's look just briefly. Let's look at Exodus chapter 14, verses 15 and 16. Exodus 14, verses 15 to 16. The Lord said to Moses... Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Lift, up thou, lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. He's basically saying light up. Light the creation. Amen. So he tells them to do this. He tells that, tell them to go forward and you lift up your rod. So there is this miraculous, supernatural event that takes place, and yet there had to be a natural action to ignite it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Yeah. Right? God didn't say, just stand back and watch me work. He said, no, tell them yes. to go forward. Tell them to start walking. Yep. Tell them to exercise some faith, and you lift up your staff or your rod. Yep. Amen? So God instructs the people to go forward, and Moses to lift up his staff over the water. Genesis 1 Verse 28. God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply 
and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the every living thing that moveth on the earth. Lighten up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do some miraculous stuff, but in order for me to do it, you're going to have to be fruitful and multiply. You're going to have to replenish the earth. You're going to have to take dominion. Yes. You're going to have to use the authority that I've yes. given you in order for this light to shine. Yes. For my light to remain yes. and be uh, effective, you're going to have to take some steps. You're going to have to take some actions. Yep. Amen? God always demands some human effort or some human act first. And only then does he perform the miracles. Yeah. We're so worried in, from grace, we think, well, we don't do anything. No, that's not true. The grace is what it makes it possible for us to do what it is we have to do in order to release God's power and anointing. If we don't speak, nothing ever happens. Right. If we don't act, if they had somebody hadn't started walking towards that Red Sea, that water would not have parted. Right. Had Moses not raised his staff and said, go forward, right. they'd be dead laying on the bank. Amen? God expects us to operate in faith. To be the light. To be the thing that brings the light. And that's the reason for these things is because events that occur without our involvement don't really affect us. I mean... If somebody else comes to me and tells me about their spiritual experience, I can go praise the Lord. But, you know, it isn't the same as if I stepped out in faith and did it. Right. Then I want to tell everybody what happened in my little corner of the world, and they're all doing the same thing I was doing. They're going, oh, really? Well, how wonderful. Right? right? It's not the same unless it's your light that gets lit. Right. It isn't that you don't appreciate other people's testimonies, and, but you want... Yours. You want to be a part of this. That's innate in us. That God has placed that in us yes. to want to light up, to be what it is He's created us to be. Yes. And only when we expend some effort do we appreciate the miracle the way God wants us to appreciate it. And the same thing applies in every area of our lives. Asking God's blessings isn't enough. We've got to make some effort that can serve as a conduit for the blessings. Mm -hmm. An act of faith. Mm -hmm. Step out. Raise the rod. Say what God said. Do something. Yes. John 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Yes. Amen. See, the paradigm of all obstacles is the Red Sea. Yeah. I think it's why it's one of the first things we see that is so dramatic in terms of the people of God, the chosen people of God, and how God works with them, how God deals with them. Because just think about it. Six days before this, they were running away from their slave masters. Right. But now... They're standing at an impasse. They've gotten free. They're running away. They're celebrating. They're partying like it's 1999, right? And now all of a sudden, here we are. An impossible situation. We thought we got out. We thought we got it made. We thought we were blessed. And then all of a sudden, this smacks us in the face. An impasse with Pharaoh and his army charging from behind. I mean, if it doesn't identify today in, in a lot of ways, I don't know what does. But here's the good news, folks. The greatest barrier turned out to be the greatest miracle. The greatest resistance, the greatest force against us turns out to be, if we will be the light, turns out to be the greatest victories that we can experience. Not only did the sea become an ambush for the enemy, it became the path that led the children of Israel to the promised land, yes. to the promises of God, yes. to their ultimate freedom, mm -hmm. to their total freedom. 
what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good. Amen. We should not be discouraged. We should not be fearful. We should not be freaking out. Because I'm telling you, I'm hearing God say, go forward. Yes. Lift up the staff. Yes. Lift up the cross. Raise up Christ and go forward because you've got a great victory coming. Yeah, it looks like a horrible mess. But those horrible impasses create the greatest miracles that this world will ever know. Those darkest places bring the greatest light that this world needs. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you're out to do the right thing, now listen to what I'm saying, because it, like it sounds like a total contradiction. But this is what God's Word is teaching us. When we're out to do the right thing, or the God thing, to be obedient to the Word of God, to operate in the Word of God, when we're out to do the right thing, the whole world is there to help you. The whole creation is there to assist you. Now it looks like just the opposite. It's like the whole world's against us. But no, if we light up, if we're the light, then the whole creation becomes a force for us, not against us. Amen? Including the greatest threats, the greatest resistance, the most impossible challenges are working for us. We just got to get our head on right. We just got to get things wired together. Amen. Yes. We got to understand the bigger they are, the more impossible to go through, the greater the miracle is going to be when it comes. Yes. Because he's not going to leave us. No. He's not going to forsake us. No. He's just looking for some light. Yep. And that's the true reality of everything in this world. No matter how evil it is, He means it to work out for good. He means it to turn out into a miracle that will far surpass whatever the negative was that we're looking at. Yes. It's to serve you on your mission. Yes. The Red Sea looked like this horrible impasse. The truth was it was the path to their mission, to their taking the promised land. It was a step in that direction. And it was going to defeat the enemy that was their biggest threat at the moment. Praise the Lord. What's our mission? To make this world miraculous. To make it what God intended it to be in day one when he said, take dominion. Light up. If you take dominion, I'll light the light. I'll, I'll make sure the miracle takes place. And obstacles are miracles waiting to happen. Philippians 2.15. And so much of the church is just sitting around wringing their hands going, Oh my God, what's this coming to? It's coming to a miracle, man, if somebody will just stand up and, and, and yes. do what God's telling them to do. Yes. That you may be blameless. You know, I mean, come on, think about it. This is what Israel was doing with Moses. Right. You bring us out here to die? Yeah. What, God, you put us here so we could be butchered and, and, and destroyed by some phony disease and, and a, a bunch of other... I'm not saying there isn't some true... You know, consequences from COVID. I'm just saying, this is something that people made up. Yes. Right. Yes. This is something that was created by evil. Yes. For evil intent. Yes. That you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, right. in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation yes. among whom you shine as lights in the world. Yes. Praise the Lord. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. Israel was in Egypt, but they weren't Egyptians. They just were living there. They were just bond servants. They were slaves there. Slaves to the creation. Slaves to the way of doing things that they did and how they did it. By chasing the Jews. Come get me, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I could say the other one. But since we all know what it means, I won't. Praise the Lord. You know what I'm talking about. 
Joe Biden, praise the Lord. But by chasing the Jews, Pharaoh put them nearer to God. By these idiots doing what they're doing, they're putting us closer to God. They're, they're forcing us to trust more in God than in this creation. They're putting us in a position. So God's going to use, God uses it for our good, even though they have an evil intent. God's going to use it to bring us closer to Him, to, bring, to put us in a place of greater faith in Him, so that He can light this creation up again, amen, the way it was intended to be. And that truth was shown by their crying out to God when they saw the Egyptian army coming. What did they do? Oh, God, what do we do? And God said, go forward and lift up your staff. Yes. It's opposition that awakens our deepest reserves of energy and spiritual power. If you, I mean, come on, let's, let's be honest. The church has become so complacent because we haven't needed anything. For the most part, we have our, you know, little issues that come up every once in a while and we'll pray and seek the Lord, maybe even fast a little bit. But the truth is, for the most part, we're living in, a, in the promised land. We're, we're, we've been living in a land that flows with milk and honey as compared to most of the rest of the world. So we haven't really needed God all that much. We just thank him for having me born in the USA. Amen. But it's opposition that awakens us. When we're confronted with a challenge, we should see it as an opportunity for spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. An opportunity to draw nigh to God mm -hmm. and for Him to draw nigh to us. Yes. God's not going to let an opportunity like this go by no. without taking the full advantage of it right. and giving us the greatest adva advantage and uh, blessing as a result of it. Yes. He's just, we're looking for an awakening. Mm -hmm. Right? If this ain't a wake up call, uh -huh. I don't know what it is. It's like God has just reached down into our, uh, you know, slumberland and grabbed us and has shaken us and said, Wake up! Yeah. Wake up! Right. Time to go to work. Right. It is an awakening. But if the church doesn't wake up, nobody else is going to get woke up. We're the alarm clock. We're the light that wakes everybody up. We're the sunrise that's going to bring, amen, people into the new day. Yes. Comfort and contentment can lead to complacency, and it has. I know in my own life, when everything is rocking on and going good, I'm not as apt to get broken before the Lord and cry out to Him and, 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 and seek His face in the way that I do when things are all going to hell in a handcart. Because then I'm laid out before Him and pleading and praying and saying, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I'll, I'll believe whatever I hear you say. He doesn't bring the evil, but He damn sure will use it. Complacency and, and contentment causes us to lose sight of, the, of our priorities. Mm -hmm. To forget that we're in this world but not of this world. Right. It causes us to begin to embrace the creation instead of the light that brought it. Right. It weakens our sense of urgency for the mission, for our purpose. Our purpose becomes no different than the world's. It's just get the most you can out of this. Be a good guy. Get along. But get what you can get. Take care of your family. Right? And forget that the mission is exactly what Don was talking about here this morning. What Suzanne was talking about. The next generation. And the generation after that. They need to know there's something more to this than a creation. There's a light that God wants shining in each and every one of them. I pray it every morning for my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and all that will be born to them. Yes. God, as for me and my house, right. we shall be saved. Yes. And I pray that each and every one of them will receive Jesus Christ into their hearts by faith. Believe that you have raised them from the dead. Yeah. Raised him from the dead. And that they will, every one of them, confess with their own mouths in total belief that Jesus Christ yes. is Lord to the yes. glory of God forever. Yes. 
And I believe that God hears me every morning. And that it's being written down. And it shall be, even as it was for me, it shall be for them. Somebody prayed for me. My mom, I'm sure, did. My grandparents. They were all believers. They may not have been as, as religious, as spiritual as some, but they believed. And I know they prayed because we don't just come to God randomly. This causes us to focus on creation and not on the light. And the light is what makes the creation the miracle that God intended it to be. The place of miracles. The garden, the place where the garden dwells. The physical or, or spiritual adversity, it can shock us out of indifference. And it does. When the crap hits the fan, buddy, we remember to pray. All of a sudden, we reconnect with God. We reconnect with our purpose. With what we were created for. Dominion. It gives us the opportunity to advance the relationship that we have with God. By breaking through the obstacle. By overcoming the enemy. Hebrews 12 Verse 26 and 27. And that's the last scripture I'm going to use this morning. I'm just going to talk to you here for a few minutes before we wrap up. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 12, 26 and 27. Whose voice then shook the earth? But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. So the things that are man-made are going to get shook loose. The things that are not man, the things that were created, are going to remain. So God says, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And, and, and people get to freaking out about that. But the truth is, if that's the case, then shaking isn't necessarily a bad thing. It tells us what is sure, what is forever, and what isn't. What, what we're going to see is what's phony. What's man's plan. Because that's going to be gone. That's going to get shook loose. And what's going to be left is God's plan. Yes. Come on. Shaking brings us closer to God. It, it refocuses us on our mission. Yep. Our dominion. Our authority. Yep. Our purpose. Which is the word of God. The love of God. The promises of God. The faithfulness of God. Because those things remain the same, unmoved, unshaken, solid as a rock. We live, and I think everybody knows it by now, in prophetic times. I mean, literally, ancient prophecies of the Bible are coming to pass right before our very eyes. And before the eyes of the world, whether they acknowledge it or recognize it or not. Right. It's happening. And what prophecy always and ultimately tells us is that through it all, no matter what, God's still on the throne. That's right. yeah. His word is still true. It is. His promises are faithful. Yes. And his love is everlasting. Yes. And that ought to give us all the boldness and the courage that we need to stand to be strong to be a light in the darkness and declare and proclaim the truth and light to this generation, to this world. In this year, there's going to be challenges for the world and for us, for God's people. Don't despise the shakings. If you think about it, most of us, at least I know I did. I came to the Lord through the shakings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had to get shook yeah. loose 
from my agenda, from my way of trying to do things, of my understanding of life and what life was supposed to be about. So pray that the redemptive purposes in all this shaking come to fulfillment. The only real hope for America, the only real hope for the world is revival. Yes. And it's time to choose revival. And let me, <laughs> let me just say it this way. We need to live, revival isn't something that happens somewhere at a church. We, in order for revival to come, we're praying for revival. We're asking God for revival. And you know what God is saying? You live revival. That's what you're here for. So we're supposed to choose revival, to live our lives in revival. Don, that's what you did with your granddaughter. I found some Christian books for little kids. Not that they don't have them, not that we don't have them at our, but I found some specific ones for the youngest grandkids. I got them. They haven't come yet, but they're coming. Yeah. It's revival. I, I want them in revival. I want them to experience revival. Yeah. And they're not going to experience it unless I'm living it. Yeah. Come on. We have to take dominion. We have to be the light. Yes. Not just a piece of the creation. Not just another hunk of the creation that's doing good things for people but a light, light that will light up the darkness. Yes. If we'll live revival, if we do that, revival has to come. Yes. It has to. It has to. Yes. We force it. Yes. We make it happen. Yes. We aren't here to live in fear. We're not here to be worry warts. We're not here to be freaking out. We're here to shine, yes. to shine His light. No matter what's going on around us, no matter the obstacles, that's not the final story. We know the end of the book. We know the final story. Yes. The last word yes. belongs to God. Yes. Amen. We are, all of us, each of us, bound for heaven. Yes. As far as God's concerned, we're already there. We're seated with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes. With God, there's always hope. For us, these can be the greatest days. They can be the greatest of times. Yes, yes. It's the light that reveals that a candle is lit. Yes. Now, that sounds kind of moronic, but it's the truth. The only way you know a candle's lit is if there's light on it. Yes. Right? right? Where are the candles? Come on. We need to be obviously lit. Yep. Praise the Lord. That light will shine brighter and brighter. The darker it gets, the brighter the light will shine. In other words, the greater the, the, greater the, the darkness, the greater the evil, the greater the negative, the greater the power, the greater the light, the greater the influence of God. Think about the book of Acts. We need to read that realistically from time to time and recognize, yes, there were tremendous miracles and signs and wonders and God was there and people could not deny it. But those people were going through a lot of crap. Yeah. There were all kinds of persecutions and, and pressures and so yeah. forth and so on. But God was with them. Yes. And they didn't pray, God, take this stuff away from us. They said, give us boldness yes. that we may speak yes. the truth and that we would see signs and wonders by your holy child, Jesus, yes. performed with us and in us and through us. Yes. It just becomes what's the most important thing? A good life in the creation or a new life? These are the last days. And I know we've been saying that most of our lives, but I'm telling you, these are the last days. Yes. And you know something? I don't watch a lot of movies anymore, but I used to watch a lot, especially violent crime <laughs> stuff, you know. They're always exciting. But um, tequila, sunrise, and those kind of things, you know. Yeah. But I'm just saying, in a movie, it's usually, it's the last 15 minutes that 
is the most exciting. If, if you're watching the kind of movies I watch. I mean, the mystery is, you know, you can't quite figure out who's who and what's what until you get to the very end of it. Confusion and, you know, it's kind of like uh, that, what was the, the one about the, the guy who was uh, supposed to be a psychiatrist and uh, he's helping this little kid who's seeing dead people yeah. and stu I, you know, dead people and come to find out he's dead. Well, you don't know it till the end of the movie. You know, it's the last 10 minutes. You go, oh, my God, I've been watching this guy thinking he's going to make a difference. He's dead. Yeah. But that's true of most, you know, really good movies to me. It's the last 15 minutes that's the most exciting. It's, it's, that's when the climax takes place. Yeah. Yeah. And God has chosen us, you and me, to live in the last 15 minutes of this movie, yeah. of this world. It's an honor. It's exciting. Challenging, but exciting. We were placed in our mother's womb for to be born at just such a time as this. No accidents. God's garden. Great obstacles but greater miracles. Go forward is what I hear God saying. Mm -hmm. And let your light shine. Hallelujah. Create some new creatures. How about light up? What comes first, the light, then the creation? Mm -hmm. If we light up, we're going to see some new creations, yes. new creatures in Christ. We're yes. going to see a whole new creation. Be the revival, is what God's saying. Amen. Be the light. Yes. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Exciting. That's the times that we're living in. You know, you can't have excitement with a little, without a little bit of fear. I mean, get on a roller coaster. Right. No, I'm not. I've been on them, but I'm not getting on another one. But you know, it's exciting. It's terrific. Yep. But it's scary as yep. the devil too, right? right? But that's what makes it exciting. So yeah, it's scary times. It's, it's dark times. But it makes it all the more exciting. And it makes the light shine ever brighter. And it fulfills the mission that God created us for in the first place. Yes. To be the body of Christ. Yes. To be a representation of God in this earth. To let the light of God shine through us. Amen? Amen. Let's do it. Let's let's live revival. Start in your own house. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to go out and win the, the, the state. Start at home. And then the doors will open. I guarantee you God will open doors and opportunities for you to reach yeah. people wherever you are and wherever they are that are in need. Because they're crying out to somebody even if they don't know it's God. Right. Whatever's out here, yeah. help me. Amen? Yeah. And God will answer in Jesus' name. Yeah. God bless you all. Have a great week. Drive careful going home. And uh, see you back here next Sunday. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. In fact, we'll see you Wednesday night if you can make it. Bible study. Hot coffee. Revelation. Good stuff. <laughs>